So those are the two basic stoneware techniques, okay? Uh, we've shortened it, straightened it out, made it nice, easy, nice and simple. You can go and practice at home. <laughs> now let's do earthenware, which will be easier to practice at home because you need even less technology. Uh, that is why which I mean you need even less equipment. All you need is your hands, basically, and your eye, like this. Um, patterns of earthenware production in mainland Southeast Asia are far more complex than stoneware. We began our survey, and this is important, assuming that all earthenware pots were basically produced the same way in their fundamental round bottom form. The reason we ended up doing this work for 20 years is that when we started to observe the process of production in different villages, we found out that they didn't all do it the same way. Okay, now this is not to say that continue <laughs> the villages that are near each other do it the same way, but if you go over a few hundred kilometers this way or this way, well, they don't do it that way at all. By the way, the original way we found to produce, to produce a pot, which is our type A, uh, is a very interesting way, which if you haven't seen it before, I hope will be the way There are a surprising variety of ways to get to the finished ground bottom form that we want. In particular, we discovered the key. Now, what, what we had to do was figure out, well, how are we going to understand this? The key to these differences is not shape or texture or decoration or any other trait in the finished pot. So the key to the differences that you're going to see is not something that you would immediately recognize in the pot that you see. Now the question for the archaeologists, or, and for us too, is how are we going to recognize these differences? And, or how are we going to find out these differences? And that, that's where mammograms come in. Okay? This is the very first stage of making a vessel. The stage often overlooked by ethnographers. Yes? but familiar to students who are trained to make tools out of stone. By the way, there's a very nice ethnographer here in, in Singapore who's taught, given me some of her slides. She took a pot making, and here she is. They're, 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 they're producing the clay, the clay, the woman who's made it, producing the clay here. And then she lays it down on a place that she's going to make it. And then here is the form. Well, what's missing are two or three pictures in between of this intermediate stage. She just missed taking this evanescent, but very important, what we call preform stage, the making of the preform. This stage involves the potter's initial transformation of a mass of raw, damp clay into a preliminary cylindrical shape, with the rim finished, but the body not yet completed. Okay, so there's two statements there. One is a mass of clay. This one, by the way, this is the same process here. But you'll notice how he, she makes the, the, the form then she builds it up, and on the right, what does she do? She finishes the rim off first. You, all, all the times, earthenware, the rim is finished before the body. Talk about counterintuitive. Okay? Okay, they make the top before they do the bottom. I think they're going to rest on the bottom, but they don't do that. They do the, finish the top before they do the bottom. You're looking at me rather quizzically. Okay, on this basis, that is using this idea of preform, we have recorded six basic variations, A through F. And what I want to do is summarize to you three of these variations, A through C, just so you get a sense, and then I'll show you a video. That'll make you all happy. The differences in the way the powder and powder makes the preform. So we're going to do type A, type B, and type C. And, uh, uh, can I do, okay. If you can see color, uh, these, this is what's called <laughs> yeah. green. This is green. That's type A. Okay. So like this. Type B are the orange things over here. There's a few floating around over here. Don't worry about this. And then type C are these things here, which, by the way, go all the way down to here. Okay. I want you to notice that. That's important. So that's <laughs> getting close. Getting closer, isn't it? Getting closer. So, but it also goes all the way there. Okay, I want you to notice that one. That, this, is, this is a very interesting one. What's going on here? How do we explain, i.e., what's the history of this? Um, and then, then there are other ones. There's these yellows here, by the way, which is women making it from on a fast wheel. That's a type B, I think, I forget. And the type E is something else. Type F, I believe, is earthenware that goes along with the stoneware production. Someone would give me. Um, wait for our book. Okay, 
type C is a north, I'm going to show you a northeastern Cambodian example. Type B is northern Cambodia, northern Thailand, excuse me. And type A is northeastern Thailand, or home, as we would like to say. So here, here we're going to look at some one woman making type A. By the way, if you want to see the video of this, there is a short clip on the web. Uh, if you go to, uh, if you've got your handout available, there's something on the handout. Um, go to the web, uh, turn it over, see the uh, videos of Thai stoneware and Thai A earthenware production at http www.asia.si.eu uh, and go search. <laughs> it's, it's later, believe me. Um, anyway, Thai A, the woman on the left, um, the potter begins with a solid cylinder of clay, as you see. Right here. Uh -huh. Okay, solid cylinder of clay. Right here, she punches holes at one end and the other end. Usually, she'll drill through with a bamboo stick, if, but if it's too if it's too sh if short enough, she'll just use the bus. And what she ends up then with is a hollow cylinder, no top, no bottom, no top and no bottom. Like that. Then she flips it, as you see here. She flips it over. So this is actually the bottom. That's going to be the bottom. Flips it, puts it here, and then she starts to flatten it out, bring the bring the walls up like this, okay? And then, then she comes over here and she, as I said, makes the rim first. Notice that this is on the trunk of a tree. This is where the pot stands still and the woman goes around. <laughs> you may be used to the idea that the pot is still and the wheel, the, the pot goes around. Uh -uh. She goes around the wheel, okay? And if you're good at it, you can do that pretty well. Keep your eye over the, over the center over, and you can make a very, very circular pot. And you would believe that it was made by, indeed, a wheel. If you were an archaeologist, I've never seen this technique before. By the way, this technique blows people's minds uh, when we talk about it in, uh, I don't remember what I'm wearing. Uh, blows people's minds in, uh, when we talk about it in the rest of the world. They never saw anything. That's still a little bit Okay, and then later in several stages, she uses a paddle and anvil. As you see here, she uses a paddle and anvil to, cl to close the hole in the bottom. I mean, you got a hole in the bottom of this pot. You know, what are you going to do? It's no good as the pot with a hole in the bottom. So you close it up, you beat it, you beat it closed, you form it out, you shape it out, etc., etc. You do that. Okay, type B. This is, this is easy compared to type A. Uh, we can see we started on type A, so you can see why when we found some other ways that we're doing it seemingly more intuitively uh, understandable, we say type A has really got something interesting going on. Type, the potter makes a flat disc of clay to serve as the base of the pot, as you see on the left. She builds up the wall using coils or rings of clay, and she forms the rim on the upper edge. Um, so subsequently, she uses a paddle and anvil to round the edges of the flat base and produce a round bottom pot. By the way, we have a thing against talking about paddle and anvil as if all paddle and anvil methods are the same. They're not. They're very extraordinarily di different in how they're used, and so I, we don't use paddle and anvil as a method anymore. Uh, it's, it just doesn't make sense. Then we come to type C. <coughs> the potter makes it, and by the way, it's usually made in a basket, as you see on the left here. The potter makes a thick disc of clay and presses down to form the walls on the flat base, as you see in the center, leaving the excess clay in the middle, almost as if it's a Mount Meru, uh, which she then removes away with Fort Kent. She raises the walls <laughs> using an ox ring, rib, and forms a rim on the upper edge. And I'll show you that here. This is an ox rib, and as you can see on the left here, uh, and it is a specific rib of water buffalo. Okay. <laughs> It's not that one, it's not this one, it's this way, and it has to curve that way. Okay, so each boat, each animal produces one. Okay, and the other side obviously is going to work here, okay? Um, and produces, and then she smooths it out, and then she produces uh, um, a round bottom pot. Okay, did I do that kind of Right, she uses a rib to round out the edges of the flat face. She uses a ring shaped scraper, oh, that's right to remove excess clay from inside the pot, but note that she does not use a paddle and anvil. It's very rare to see even any kind of tapping at all, except by that rib, maybe, 
as you see here on the left as she rounds it out. Notice that she's taken the pot off the, off the leaf. Okay, the leaf there is on the, on the ground. And she, that, so you have the leaf uh, impression there. But of course that will all disappear as she, as she finishes off the pot. Okay, as an aside, and now we're going to for those of you who think that this is the one for the produce the pot. As an aside, this talk gives an opportunity to address a common misconception among Chinese art historians about how early round bottom earthenware pots were made. Also, invariably, the text states the pot was built up from oils. The basic error is to assume that round bottom earthenware pet vessels were made like stoneware ones from the bottom up. Instead, as you have just seen, the process of making a round bottom pot, pot begins at the top. Okay? Begins here, not down there. The finished rim is made first. The round bottom is made last. And that seems to be a universal thing. This statement holds true for all earthenware pots we have seen made and raises the question of just what type or types were used by ancient Chinese potters or all other potters. Now, how did they make their pots? There are many different ways to make them. So now I can go to the video. Uh, yes. Uh, before leaving this topic of process, I would like to show you video excerpts of a potter in action. This is Tao Yun Ying, a 62-year-old dye potter in southern Yunnan province using a variant of pipe B. Thank you. 
Come. So we, I paid for two of these pots and didn't get them because <laughs> that obviously they hadn't been fired. But what she did do, she had the other pots to fire, so she took those down there and she set up a kind of mandala. If you if you saw what she did there, she put one pot in the center, she put the other around. I did. Only time I've ever seen this, I don't know any meaning of it at all, I don't want to say anything about it. But here was this mandala, and she put the sticks over it, and then she put the um, bamboo leaf over that, and then she threw more bamboo leaves in, and she started the fire. And uh, this was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, we walked away. The next morning, we meet her at the market, she, she gets off the bus, she has collected those pots, she takes them over to the market, and she puts them out on the street, along with her other friend, there are two women that do this in this and they, and they sell the pots, like that. What they don't sell, she leaves there with a friend of hers in the market, and the next, the next time she comes down, I think twice a week. It's a five-day year, five day market. It rotates every five days, so she comes down every fifth day and does it again, and makes pots in between time. So, where are we? What are some of the implications of these?